Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. 25 years ago this month exactly, Bill and Hillary Clinton took control of the Democratic Party and they basically run it with a few exceptions ever since. It's been a long time. Here's a look back. I still believe in a place called hope. I accept your nomination for President of the United States. I experimented with marijuana a time or two and I didn't like it and didn't inhale. You could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I can state unequivocally that, as my husband has said, these are false allegations. It depends upon what the meaning of the word is. Yes. The great story here for anybody willing to find it and write about it and explain it is this vast right-wing conspiracy. What difference at this point does it make? I feel your pain. This was the biggest nothing burger ever. Thank you and may God bless you and the United States of America. If you're a recent college graduate, that's your entire life. That's how long the Clintons have been in control, a quarter century. And for decades, they've held control because they and their acolytes have ruthlessly stamped out numerous charges of sexual harassment and assault brought against Bill Clinton. Suddenly, out of nowhere, that's no longer working for them. The society-wide backlash against sexual harassment by powerful producers, actors, and politicians has finally turned and bit the Clintons themselves. Just yesterday, Democratic Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, she's the one who filled Hillary Clinton's New York Senate seat when Hillary left it to become Secretary of State, said that Bill Clinton should have resigned during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. In response, Gillibrand was blasted by Hillary Clinton's longtime spokesman, Philippe Brains. He tweeted this, over 20 years, you took the Clinton's endorsements, money, and seat, hypocrite. But Senator Gillibrand is not alone in turning on the Clintons. Liberal blogger Matt Iglesias, who's defended them for years, he works at Vox, he now says the president should have resigned back then. At an event in Miami, former DNC chair Donna Brazile, also very close to the Clintons, says that Bill Clinton's accusers deserve to be heard. Where's this coming from? What does it mean other than the end of the Clinton era, finally and completely? Chris Hahn is an attorney. He spent years working for Senator Chuck Schumer of New York, a longtime Clinton ally, and he joins us tonight. Um, Chris, thanks for, for joining us. Anytime, Tucker. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm not going to pile on the Clintons. Actually, I'm going to say something that I didn't think I would ever say. I agree with Philippe Reigns in this case. I think that Senator Gillibrand um, is basically treating the Clintons like the Clintons treated women. She used them, and now she's discarding them. And I think it is uh, contemptible. Wouldn't you agree? No, look, I mean, she's got a good opinion, and I think it's a good voice that needs to be heard. And let's face it, Tucker, I think that opinions on some of the things that happened in the 90s have evolved dramatically in this country, particularly in the last, you know, 10 months or so. Yeah. Uh, and I think that there is uh, uh, people looking back on, on what happened, not just with Bill Clinton, but Anita Hill and, and Justice Thomas with a whole new light. And they are looking yeah, at, no, uh, at I the don't, women I mean, that were involved. I, you, in that. If I were much younger, you might be able to pull that over on me because I'd be like, really, people didn't worry about rape in the 1990s. But I was there, actually. And Justice Thomas was never accused of any physical contact of any kind. He was accused of saying sexual things to Anita Hill. We can debate whether he did or not. But right. he was never accused of assault in any way. Bill Clinton was credibly accused of forcible violent rape by a woman who was not a political opponent. She was a Democrat, and she told a bunch of people about it at the time. And she was attacked by fellow Democrats, dismissed by the press, and made to feel that she'd done something yeah. wrong. That was wrong then. And it's wrong now. And what I find infuriating I is all these people I, uh, attacked her then, and now they're like, oh, well, you know, standards have changed. No, rape's always I, been real. It's always been bad. I agree, Tucker. I mean, there, you're not getting any argument with me. You know, and you look back on it now, and, and, and there's a lot of disgust when you look back at that, both on, you know, both from people on the left and the right and the way things were done towards women who came forward with allegations. And I, I think the initial instinct that is happening now for women to be believed until they're not, 
uh, is probably the right way to go. And I think we're going to see more of that. And I think it's empowering for women. And I think that we're going to see less sexual harassment in the workplace. And we're going to see women move farther up the chain because I think having more women in power is going to stop this altogether. And I think that's a great thing for America. Well, that's total nonsense. That's great, that's, uh, that's, first of all, that's nonsense. Social science doesn't back you up. And there have been studies on this. And they don't say what you say they say. But moreover, Hillary Clinton just ran for president a year ago. She's married to the guy right. accused of rape. And she attacked the she did attacked the women who accused him of sex crimes. And she didn't do it in the 90s. She did it last year while running for president. And she's still denying it. So she wanted the most hey, powerful look. job in America, and she's attacking the women. So how does your theory work exactly? Tucker, you know, on the Clintons, I love them. I think that they, I think Bill was a great president. I think she would have been a great president. They are no longer going to be the leaders of the Democratic Party. That is very, very clear at I this agree. point. In about a year and a half, We'll pick a new nominee to run for president, and he or she will be the leader of the Democratic Party going forward until they're not president or until they lose the president. No, you're right, race. and that's an interesting so conversation. Have... No, I, look, I, I agree with you, and actually, I would love to have a longer conversation about which wing in the party is ascendant at this point. But I can't, I just, we need to, right. and I don't want to do a week of sex stories about the Clintons, because they're off the stage, I agree with you. I hope this is the last one we ever do. They're gone. I, look, I agree with you. But Michelle Goldberg at the New York Times is not gone. She has a column there. She's totally fraudulent, a fraudulent feminist. She's writing this, quote, because of Broderick's allegations, Bill Clinton no longer has a place in decent society. Now, we can say Bill Clinton's off the stage. Michelle Goldberg's not off the stage. She still has a platform, and people listen to her and take her seriously. Where was she a year ago? These allegations right. are 20 years old. Why should we let Michelle Goldberg, this ersatz feminist, off the hook for just now recognizing rape is wrong? Like, why should I forgive her for that? I'm pretty, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I've seen Michelle Goldberg. I don't think she was writing a column for the New York Times in 1996. She was defending okay, Hillary Clinton a New year York ago. Times. I read her stuff. She, she was defending well, Hillary Clinton. Well, I'll have to vote for Hillary. You're okay. Gonna, you're, well, look, Tucker, you're going to hold Hillary Clinton responsible for her husband's crimes? That's ridiculous. No, I'm not. I'm not actually. And by the way, I, and if, I'm so being as honest Michelle, as I can be. Why should Michelle Goldberg? Because why, why all should of Michelle us Goldberg knew, hold I'll tell you exactly for why. It. Because Michelle Goldberg and lots of other people on the left thought it was more important than, that they have power than that some woman get justice. Okay, fine, but you can't pretend to be a feminist simultaneously, which is what people like Michelle Goldberg, and it's not just her, it's, it's the entire feminist establishment that covered up for like, his crimes because like they wanted him in office. And I just think they should be held accountable for that. Not the Clintons, their defenders. Like I said, I think there's been a major evolution in this country, and I think that's a good thing, and I think things are going to change, and we're not going to be seeing these things covered up and swept under the rug. So, and that's so not last necessarily year, good for the so current tell president me last either. Year, people that is didn't not think, necessarily good for the current president. People didn't think rape was a big deal last year during the campaign? I thought the I Democrats think, were the party of women, so, but you're telling me they didn't take the, it seriously last year. Tucker, the person who was accused of rape was not running for president last year. Hillary His Clinton wife was, who attacked my knowledge, the woman who was accused never, him she was. She was never. She was never accused of rape. She believed no. her husband. That was no. her crime, Tucker. She didn't believe. She didn't believe her husband for a second. And that don't insult my intelligence. She attacked well, the I, women who accused him. I was there. I covered this in 1998, and she right. led the charge against Monica Lewinsky, who did nothing wrong. She was like a kid, and. Mrs. Yeah. Clinton is the one who said she's a stalker and a nutcase and don't believe her. She did that. Yeah. It wasn't just believing think, her husband. I think, uh, look, Tucker, I think Monica Lewinsky is owed an apology by a lot of people. Yeah, uh, I agree. Myself included. And I think everybody, I think everybody uh, on the left and the right who attacked that woman and painted her with a scarlet letter when she was just a, a 20 something I agree uh, with star eyed that. person. I, I feel that uh, there's nobody in, in, in my lifetime who I feel was treated worse than her politically. And I agree. I think that that's something that needs to and be rectified FBI, right away. And the FBI ought to apologize to her also. They sweated her. They threatened her. She didn't do anything wrong. I mean, she did something, you know, she was a kid, yeah. she's an intern. But I, I agree, there are many yeah. people responsible no for wrecking for that woman's life. But Hillary Clinton is one of them. And my only point is, when it was politically expedient, all these fake feminists defended Hillary Clinton. And now that she's off the stage, they're like, oh, I can unburden myself. Just kidding, he's guilty. Well, no. look, look, I, I don't I don't think they're fake feminists, uh, Tucker. I think they were compartmentalizing some of their feelings on different things. I know a lot of women. I know a lot of women. I know a lot of women who do not like Bill Clinton to this day uh, and are yeah. very critical of Bill Clinton because I of the Monica too. Lewinsky scandal, I because of too. the other things brought up against him. And these are liberal women.
Chris, I hope that we have closed the book on the Clintons. And we'll see you back here on another topic. Thank well, you. Well, I think, I think we have. Thanks, man. <laughs>